Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel here. I hope you are all doing very well. This week we're starting things off right where we left them last week and that is with our video series RC Everything. We are taking a Lego train, one of the common passenger trains that they offer there on Amazon or you can pretty much find them anywhere and we're converting them to all radio controlled components so we can essentially operate this Lego train right from the transmitter that flies this jet turbine. If you own one of these LEGO trains, leave a comment in the section below describing what kind of functionality would you like to have within your train. I heard that a lot of these LEGO trains, they consume a lot of batteries that you have to buy off the shelf and it's like six triple A's at a time from what I understand. Sounds like a lot of battery purchasing for the kids when they want to run these things all day long. Here's a look at the transmitter that we're going to use for this Lego train. I'm going to get into more of the details about this and what we've programmed in for functionality within the train very shortly here. I'm also going to show you what kind of functionality and talk through it that we could have with this transmitter should I go down that route. Let's first start out by talking about this train. This is the one that has been modified to complete radio control components. The only component in this train that has been left in stock configuration for the most part, there has been a small wiring configuration change that was required, is this power or drive unit at the rear side of the train. The motor is in stock configuration, however the wiring had to be altered in order to hook up to a common electronic speed control found in the RC hobby. Outside of that, everything above here, all the typical LEGO components have been swapped out for RC components in order to get more functionality and the features that we are looking for. All right guys, in order to start this thing up and turn it on, what I have to actually do is open up the front of the car and take the little dude out from his seat. So this is the common Lego character that they include for this passenger train. I have to take our conductor out or whatever you want to call them. Then I have to reach in here and turn on the unit. So I hold down a button and that essentially fires it up. I see a red light and I can put the guy back in here and shut the door. To get things moving, all we do is increase the throttle stick position and the train will begin to accelerate. The train is going to accelerate until it hits constant speed. Now the stick position is roughly in the center and this can be displayed right on the transmitter display, the LCD screen that you see there. As we go from zero to full throttle, you can see how it ranges from zero to 100%. So essentially we have a virtual infinite range of throttle. This is a big advantage over the stock position or the stock system where we can only select a few different settings. Where here we can select a number between one and 100 and we're gonna get a different speed out of the train from each one of those different positions. Now I'm trying to push the limits of the train here, accelerating to a point until we don't actually throw the train off the track. Somewhere in the video you can see exactly that happening, but here we're not gonna do that. The big point here is that we're able to see the throttle position changing, and as we bring this to a stop, we can now enter what is known as brake mode. Imagine going down a significant grade. We can slow that train down, and then we go and hit it a second time, and we actually enter into reverse mode. So having the option to reverse the train is sticking in line with the stock configuration because the stock configuration can do that as well. But I do believe the braking action is something different. Imagine going down that grade and you want to stop the train completely. You can do that simply by pulling on that stick and the train will come to a full stop. So another thing that you're noticing is we do have a counter in the top right of that display. This is showing the actual time that passes by. This gives us our run time and it lets us know how long we've actually run for this particular run of the train. We've now been operating the train for 8 minutes and 50 seconds throughout the recording of this video. I want to slide over to the monitor screen and show you exactly what's happening to the throttle stick position versus the throttle output to the train. As we increase that throttle stick position, you can see there is a delay on the throttle output to the train. And as we decelerate the train, you can also see there is a delay. The acceleration delay is a little bit more than the actual deceleration delay. Now I programmed this into this radio for two reasons. When I first 
first put the train on the track and flicked the throttle all the way to 100%, the train essentially wanted to do a massive burnout to accelerate all the cars up to top speed. And this is not helpful for anyone, and I certainly want to prevent a user, whoever comes over, from being able to do this to the wheels on the train. The other thing is, we know that trains don't accelerate nor decelerate all that quickly. So having the delay there shows momentum of the train and shows that the train behaves more or less like a full-size train. Now, another thing that I want to be able to show is all the functionality that we do have on this radio. There's tons of open switches and everything on this radio that we can utilize to control either a second train or even track switches on the train track itself. All we need to do is hook up multiple different receivers, bind it to this radio, and we can access that. Now, I'm going into the telemetry screen. This is another thing that we could do with this radio. You can see all the different telemetry values. We have voltage, we have temperature, you see g-force there, amps. We can select any one of these if we have the correct hardware to the train so that we can measure what the voltage of the battery is. We can set up warnings to call out if things are getting too low and we need to stop. To get this type of functionality, all we need to do is buy the hardware and then program it into the radio. Well guys, that pretty well sums it up for this video. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one.